You know, the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave, he gave, gave his only begotten son. That word there is edokin. Edokin comes from the Greek verb didomai, which means to give. But guess what? Didomai also has another side. It means to slap or smite on the face. Insult. When you read that word there, for God so loved the world that he gave, there's also the flip side of the pancake. If you reject that gift, it's a slap in the face. Come on. Come on. Bye -bye. For a decade, I slapped God. <laughs> Come on, sweet Holy Ghost. <laughs> for a decade. I slapped God in the face, and yet, he loved me. Oh, yeah. Drunk in the gutter, he loved me. Homeless, he loved me. Breaking into other people's cars to sleep, he loved me. He never quit on me. I thank him for every hard thing that came my way, because those hard things softened up my hard heart. If you go through troubles, sometimes you ought to take a moment and say, Oh, thank you, God. Yeah. You're, ch you're changing me. He's turning up the heat to change you. Because <laughs> he loves you. Yeah. I'd still be in the gutter if he didn't love me. And he's never broken a promise to me. Not one. Glory to his name. He promised her. He described her a year before I met her, and I thought, this is impossible. Yet here we are, married almost, we're going on 20 years now. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 That word he gave occurs in another place in the scriptures, Ephesians 4.11. It says, he gave some apostles some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. Ooh, this is cool part here. Why did he do it? For the, it, the King James says perfecting, but the Greek actually says it's like he drew us out. He pulled us up. He elevated us. My, my. Ooh, when you think about it, he's talking about anointing and gifting and ooh, that's what he's done. He sent this man here and that wonderful woman there That's right. to help me to see Jesus a little better. Hallelujah. He sent Tracy to help us to see Jesus better. Now, gentlemen, men of the congregation, I need your help. Because believe it or not, I'm out of words. I need your help. <laughs> If the pastor, either one, Sister Sonia, some of your preaching has touched my heart for days. Amen. Amen. If, if you heard a word from the pastor, if you heard a word from the other pastor, if God touched you, maybe they were just talking to you in the hallway. Maybe they just stopped for a moment and you prayed together. If God somehow touched you, man, I'd like you to stand up right now. Ooh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Look at them. Look at them, pastors. Look at them. They're voting with their feet. They're standing on them. <laughs> and now, would you do me one more favor? Would you give God some applause for sending us such a high quality pastor and his wife? Woo, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus that he loves us enough to send us the right kind of leadership. Amen. It's my wife's turn. <laughs> Ladies, if Sister Sonia has ever given you a word of encouragement, if she has prayed with you, prayed for you, or for a loved one, if she's been a comforter to you, She's just Proverbs 31. Amen. Yeah. 
Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Amen. Ladies, please stand and give Sister Sonia a loving hand. And I want to say to Pastor Philip and Sister Sonia, we moved from Evans in 2006 to North Augusta. So for three years, until 2009, we were attending our church in Evans. And one day, Rod heard from God, and God told him, if we did not leave that church, we were going to die spiritually. One day we were driving down Highway 25 and we saw this church and we decided to attend. We didn't try any other church. This was the first church and the only church. <laughs> and after the second Sunday, Rod said, this is where we need to belong, where we need to join and we need to belong to this church. And I was like, really? Because Rod, other than dating me for 49 days and marrying on the 50th, Rod takes forever and two days to decide on something. <laughs> so I was totally shocked, but I'm so blessed and so thankful that not only my husband hears from God, but that he's obedient. Amen. And God brought us here. Hallelujah. And we are so blessed to be a part of your ministry and a part of Sweetwater Church of God family. And we love you all. Thank you so much. Oh, my. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'll give this. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. Amen. It's my turn now to introduce you. No? Well, he does, don't he? Praise God. Amen. Thank God that we are blessed with the best. I thank the Lord for them, and I know you do. They have ministered into my life in such a mighty way they have helped me to go up a little bit higher in God higher heights and deeper depths in God and I'm I thank you for that and I appreciate y'all so much sister Cheryl um, had said that the gift that we're going to present to you all is it's a gift of time it's going to be a gift to, of time a time to be able to refresh to relax to rest and to have a whole lot of fun. But I want to read this scripture that the Lord gave me to read this morning. It's 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 17. It says, Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. You all labor in the word and doctrine, and you deserve double honor. And I just thank God for you, and I thank God that he has put me and I know you all are thankful that he has placed you in this congregation to have the leadership that we have and we're truly grateful and thankful for that I have a very special gift uh, from the men's and, and women's ministry but it's from the entire church um, such a son if you would, would you come up here with pastor Philip um, I was thinking this morning what to say and what would be the perfect scripture to find and describe our pastors, but I just want to speak from my heart this morning, if that'll be all right. And I got the mic, so I guess that's going to be all right. Um, I love to tell people about Sweetwater Church of God. Amen. Everywhere I go, I'm proud to tell them that my pastor is Bishop Napier Amen. and his wife is Sister Sonia. Yeah. 
We go, I've, I've shared about them in Jamaica. I've shared about them in Atlanta and everywhere I go. And I'm so proud to say, yeah, go to Sweetwater Church of God YouTube page. And, and sometimes when I speak, they say, man, I love to hear you preach. I say, look, if you want to hear a real preacher, you come by 1444 Edgefield Road because that one right yonder is what preachers want to be when they grow up. I love the anointing. It's on Pastor Philip. Pastor Phil, you've helped so many of us here. And just speaking on behalf of my family, from before I walked into this church, you've been helping me. Been taking counsel from you. About a year and a half before we ever come to church here. We walked in the doors, and I knew this was the place to be. I think it was maybe second, third, fourth, I don't know. We wasn't here long. And I run up, I grabbed my wife and run up to the church, to the front of the church where Pastor Philip was. And I said, I don't know how y'all normally do it here, but we join it right now. <laughs> and he just smiled real big. He said, Brother Brian, that'll be okay. <laughs> so unofficially, we joined that night. And then when they had church joining, uh, official church joining, we joined the church. And we've been there ever since. It's been one of the greatest things that's ever happened to my family. The leadership here is poured into my children. And if y'all know my children, that's a lot of pouring. But I've seen and watched y'all walk on the mountaintop and in the valleys. And I've never seen you question God. I've never seen either of you turn your back on God. And in the middle of some of your, the, the times that I've watched and, and you walking through, and I know that, that you're walking through a struggle, and you know that God's going to carry you through, in the middle of all that, you still encourage in the middle of all of that, you still edify. You still stand up and preach the word of God. And you preach it with fire. And I tell people about Sister Sonia. I tell them, look, she's tiny. And she's quiet and reserved till you put a mic in her hand. <laughs> that, that lady can preach. I love to hear her preach. I love the word that you shared. Um, the seed in the barn. You, you preached on Sennacherib not too long ago. All those things that you pour into the ladies. And Tanya comes home and tells me things that y'all share in, in the women's ministry and how good you've blessed her. And you've been such a blessing to my wife. Been such an encourager to me, Pastor Philip. And I thank you for looking and, and picking up where my mentor, after he went home to be with Jesus, stepped in and said, I, I got you. I'm going to help you get where you want to be at. See the gifting and callings in your life. Those were things that you didn't have to do, but being the pastor that you are. One of the things you, you told us when we first got here was we want to help maximize your potential. See, those are things, and, and you've ministered to me. You can't throw dirt on influence. All those things that you've ministered, and I take them and I share them. I just want to tell you all how much we love you all at 2115 on the other side of the river, how much we love and how much we pray for you all and how much we appreciate Everything, And I know that if we had time to pass the mic in church this morning, and I know we don't, but if we had time, everybody could stand up and tell you just how much they love you and just how much we, you mean to us Amen. as a church family here and all that you do. And know that we're praying for y'all, your health. I'm believing for a full recovery. I'm believing God's going to touch you. I'm believing that there's coming a day when we've already, your boy's going to run across this aisle up front. He's going to dance and shout all over the place. We believe in that. Those things that y'all are believing this church is believing with y'all. Now, with all of that said, they talked about time and refreshing and all of those good things. I want to read to you what we got for you. If I can get it open, it's got a combination lock on it. We got together with Sister Cheryl, and I talked to her, and, and we, wanted, we weren't real sure what we wanted to do because sometimes we get a, a, an individual gift from the men's and the women's ministry. And we got together and talked, and uh, the men's ministry and the women's ministry, we've known about this for a couple of months and tried our best to keep it real quiet. But she has put in all the work, and Sister, Sister Cheryl had to fly out this morning, and she wasn't going to be, not able to be here today. But I told, them, I told her that I would be sure to let them know that she was the one that spearheaded all of this. And she went above and beyond. And from our men's ministry and our women's ministry and the, the local congregation here, this is a certificate of appreciation presented to Pastor Philip and Sister Sonia. Thank you for your obedience to God and leading his church home. Enjoy a much-deserved week of rest and relaxation at your favorite 
Hilton Head Island has been awarded you this 29th of April, 2018 from the Men's and Women's Ministry. Now, there is no timeline on this. It is for y'all to use at your convenience whenever you feel uh, lit. And if, if you need to go down right after church, I believe y'all can eat at Carabas and head right on down. <laughs> Pastor Philip, we love you. Sister Sonia, we love you. Praise the Lord. Well, without further ado, Sister Barbara Head. But before I introduce Sister Barbara Head, he's another head down here. This would be Brother Claude Head. You've heard me talk about his brother, Clyde. Clyde was a dear friend of mine, along with Brother Claude. Clyde is, I can't even tell you all the things. <laughs> I was privileged to be able to preach Brother Clyde's funeral, Brother Claude's brother. But today I'm telling you, these, these folks is the salt of the earth, ladies and gentlemen. I'm telling you right now, they're real. And they mean so much to me. So, Brother Claude, how about just stand up on them North Carolina mountain feet and tell these folks what Jesus means to you for just a few minutes? Hey, I'll help you. Maybe I won't help you. You had a job. I want to tell you something. Though. I know this boy from a little bitty fella. And when his mom was carrying him around on his arm, or on her arm, I'd bite on his arm. You remember that? I do. I do. <laughs> They've been dear friends for us for a long time. And I'm glad that we came up and under their ministry because they don't believe, they believe in the fire. They don't believe in the smoke. They believe in the fire. And I'm glad I believe in the fire too. God bless you. <laughs> Come on with it. Like I've said, and I can't say it enough, Sister Barbara Head is, as she comes, is one of the finest women of God on the planet. I'm just telling you, you can look it all over and you can't find another one as fine and as sweet spirited. And as she touched my hand over, I thought, Jesus, give me some sweetness. Just give me some of that sweetness. You know, there's some chocolate that you eat that ain't as sweet as other chocolate. I'm part of that chocolate group that ain't as sweet sometimes. But this one, she got double sweetness. Give it up for the great woman of God, Sister Barbara Head, in here today. I love you so much. I love you so much. I just, I just have to tell you, he's prejudiced. Oh, it's good to be here, and I'm going to read what I started to preach about, if I can. And I know that God has to reason the way this service has gone thus far this morning. We had, I, I had three things I wanted to tell you before I forgot. A word that the Lord has spoken to my spirit in the last few months. One, one time in the service, we was having service, and the Holy Ghost just come on the scene in tongues. And the interpretation for that was, they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall rise up with wings as eagles. They're going to run and not be weary, and they're going to walk and not faint. Teach us, Lord, as a church to wait. 
You have waited this morning because there was a reason for it. People's been praying for me to get my voice back. I've called people before I come here. I dared not call. I didn't want to not come. I wouldn't come if I could just talk. But I, I didn't get my voice back all together yet, but it's coming after this service. The devil can just keep on, but it's going to come back. But that was a word went, meant for our church that morning. And at the end of that service, a young man came down that aisle. I won't call no names. You wouldn't know if I did. But he came down that aisle. And that church, as a body of believers, I've never hardly seen it like that. Nobody asked them to come. But that body just rose up and went down to meet that young man around the altar. The whole church, when a church, the whole church is in mind, in one accord, miracles will happen. Oh, miracles is going to happen around this place. And I know they already are. But it wasn't too long after that he was called home to be with the Lord. Who knows? Who knows? But that was the time God got him ready. God sent a warning. And another another thing, the church where I go is not exactly like this, but I wish it was. I try to make it like this, but so far I'm not doing too good a job. But anyway, another spirit thing that the Spirit spoke was this. We've been praying, praying for a restoration revival. A restoration revival. Trying to get back what we used to have. You know, I'd preached a many a time. I'd preached wrong a many a time about the church at Ephesus that they they had lo they had lost their first love. No, that wasn't right. They didn't lose it because if you lose some, you go back and you try to find it. I go back two or three different times to every place I've been in that house, hunting my telephone. Hunt my glasses, and I can't find them. But I don't quit looking. I keep looking. I've got to find them. So if you lose something, you're going to try to go back and find it. But if you left it, whoa, whoa, whoa. It's going to have to be a restoration if you're going to make it where God wants you to be. But we're still praying for restoration, revival. But you know what the Lord said? The Lord spoke another word. He said, I, I have not changed. If there's any changing to be done, you're going to have to do it. If you want it, you're going to have to do. Just have what you used to have. Get it back. And this young man gave me a word. He gives me several. But don't. He just loves me, and I love him. Don't take all that to heart. I'm just me. I'm like uh, they told uh, that, that brother that sings with, uh, I can't think of his name, Jeff Easter, said his father, when he sent him out to do his, his ministry, he said, boy, he said, be what you is and not what you ain't. Because if you ain't what you is, then you is what you ain't. So I'm what I'm is today, and I can't help it. I've got Sister Napier in my blood, too. I think we were closer than kin folks. We love, we love one another. And there's never a time that I ever remember preaching that I didn't call her name. End of service. She taught me so much, but I have an idea. Coming on over here, I'd keep praying. God, help me be able to talk. They prayed for me in here. Lord, help me be able to say what I need to say. But let me tell you what the scripture was. He done it. Took my message, the very identical message. God had him prepared because I couldn't be doing it. But I'm going to try to reread it. It's found in Exodus 3, 14 through 15. 
God was talking to Moses. Go tell Pharaoh to set my people free. Tell them I am. Now this is one of Sister Napier's words. I am has called me. I am has sent me. I am that I am is here because God sent me, but he already had somebody with the message. Praise God. Hallelujah. Tell them I am has sent thee to them, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and sent Isaac and Jacob. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob has sent thee to them. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. I am that I am. That's his name, folks. That's his name. Hallelujah. He hasn't changed. He's the same God. We're serving that same God today. He's not changed. His name is still I am that I am. I change not. It would be a memorial to God as long as eternity lasts. That's going to be a long time, ain't it? That's going to be a long time. God had a map. I had to come whether I could preach or not. I had to come. This is my children. You're my family. You're my brothers and sisters. I had to come. Even though I can't talk, praise God, I can shout a little bit. Oh, I can enjoy the singing. I can enjoy the singing. I can enjoy the fellowship. I can enjoy the love that's in this house. Hallelujah. I can feel the holy presence of my God. Yes. A memorial. A memorial is a monument, a statue, a holiday, or a ritual which serve as a remembrance or reminder of a person or an event. This, this past week, I have heard about the, uh, the wall that honors the Vietnam re- uh, veterans. And I thought it was a long time in coming. It was a long time in coming. We lost 58,000 young men and women in that war. And it seemed like people just didn't even hardly recognize those Vietnam veterans for so long. But one day, somebody did. And they built this wall. And their names are on that wall. You know, our names are in something greater. Our names are on the Lamb's Book of Life. Hallelujah. Nobody can change it. We are the only ones that could take it out. But I'm leaving mine there. I'm leaving mine there. I'm going on a trip one day. I'm coming back here one day when I can preach till I can't preach no more. I feel like I could go on all day. But I know this is my my sons. This is his day. We're here to honor him. Oh, uh, the thing about memorials, so many times they're given after we're dead and gone. Don't give me no love when I'm gone. He's going he's gonna to celebrate me home. And it's going to be a camp meeting style funeral. He's going to celebrate me home. If I don't go by way, if I have the rapture, if I do, we'll see up, up there. We'll meet up there together. But I'm just here to tell you to die today. You are blessed, blessed, blessed. Oh, what I wanted to tell you and for God. Does anybody here forget? If you don't, wait till you get in your 80s. Cloud turned 86 last year. I said, honey, I wanted to make him feel good. I said, honey, you're just four years away from 90. (laughs) But I said one thing, honey, you've got a young wife. (laughs) What can I say? I'd I'd like to finish it, but 
I come again sometime. I only come by invitation. I'll be back. I'll be back again. But I, I did. I, I worried over it. I grieved over it when I, I've been sick for about three days. And it just, my voice got worse yesterday. And I knew it was too, too late to call and cancel. But I didn't want to cancel. I wanted to come. So I'm, I'm kind of like that. I'm kind of proud in some ways. But one day I called a friend of mine and I'd fail on a, I'm going to tell this story, and I'm going to let you have it. I fell at a picnic table. I was trying to help my husband put up an awning for our camp trailer. We camped for about 16 years up in Helen, Georgia, every summer. Great place to go and camp. But I was up there trying to help him, and he got up on that picnic table. I said, get down off of that picnic table. If you fall, there's no way I can get you up. Let me up there. Was that proud? Could I do a better job than my husband? I thought I could. I thought I could. And I reached over there to put that thing up there where it belonged. And, buddy, I overreached and I overfell. I fell off that table and I hit chairs and stuff going down. I mean, his skin and uh, fractured about three ribs. And, but you don't want to do that. Don't ever try to override your husband. If you think you can do something better, better than him, tell him why you're sitting down. <laughs> don't get up on the picnic table to show him. I'm warning you, don't do that. So when I fell... I mean, I, I couldn't even talk then, sure enough. I was out of breath, it not the breath that of me. Skin all the way down, hurt so bad, about six or eight weeks. And so I had this dear friend, Nancy Main, way up in Colorado. And I called her and I was telling her about it. She said, well, Sister Head, don't, don't, don't the Bible have something to say that... Uh, Pride. Me needing comfort now. Yeah, here's one of them people that can bring you down. Don't, don't. Pride cometh before fall. Well, it taught me, it taught me something. I will leave you with that. Come on, y'all. Listen. As I come along and was talking to the Lord about it, he said, I know how to move. Didn't he know how to move? He knew how to move. Listen to me. Before you walk down off this platform, just I want you to, well, let's walk down here. I'm gonna I'm gonna let you walk down here. I, I ain't gonna let you. You walk where you want, but <laughs> you ain't gonna stand on the table not while I'm here. I promise you that. Look at her. She gonna go the other way. That's all right. That's all right. Come on. I never met a woman that didn't have three bags. Listen to me. I want you to come stand right here with me. Huh? There's a couple of things I want to do this morning. First is... If you are a woman and you feel like God has anointed you to speak or teach, 
I want you to come stand right here in front of me. Emily, you better get yourself up here. Come right on. I want you to listen to me. She's about to give you something. You don't get in school. You don't get in the mail. And you don't get for most church people. She's going to pray for you. And, why you, and, and where you've been struggling, mm, that's all about to go away. The Bible says, contend for the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. I consider her one of them that has something that the church in this generation desperately and positively needs. Am I right? And you women here that are standing here have chosen to come because I ask you that you had a voice to speak for God. Teaching, ministry of some kind. Sister Head, I want you to take those precious little hands of yours. Hold on a minute. I got oil for this. I think I do. Lord, they hit my old, no, right up under my nose. Yo, your life is about to change. Glory to his name. See these hands, oh Lord. These hands of healing, 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 healing. I'm telling you. He's Now rejoice, somebody. Come on here. Come on, rejoice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now listen to me. A lot of times in Pentecostal ranks, if it's not emotional enough, we don't feel like we have received anything. But I want to assure every one of you in this line today, you just received something from God that's going to help you fulfill who, what the Lord Jesus has called you to do. I want to remind you of his word earlier. My gentleness will make you great. Hallelujah. My gentleness, it don't take some forceful thing. It was just deposited inside of you today. Now rejoice. Come on, somebody. Somebody rejoice with them. All right. Y'all can stand right there. Just stand, just keep standing right there. I wasn't gonna go this far, but being this good, we might as well just swim on out a little further in the pool. Any men. You feel and know that God 
has called you to speak, to teach, to minister. Without begging, pleading with you. If you know, I want you to come stand right here in front of these ladies right here, right now. What did I do with that oil? Here it is. Y'all come right on around. Ladies, y'all ain't got to move. Come right on around. Come right on up. Just a little, make a little more room right here. Come on. Come on right on up. Listen to me. <laughs> Don't listen to me. Just receive it. Every bit of it. I'm telling y'all, it's going in you. Jesus. Now let's praise him. Come on. Hey, that's just how simple. That's just how simple. We are memorials unto our God, every one of us. We're being watched every day. People don't like us all the time. But we are living memorials of who God was, what he's done for us. He saved us. He, we're born again. We're not like we used to be. I remember when I got saved and walked outside, the grass was greener. The birds sounded sweeter. Oh, the flowers smelled beautiful when I got born again. We're not like we used to be. We got a mission. We're, we're memorials unto our Savior. He lives. He's not dead. Hey. God, Keep you. right on. Hey, I... Both of them. And Sister Sonia, Lord, don't never leave that precious one out. She's my daughter also. She didn't know it, but I told her today. She is. She is you like that, like me and Carl. We've been married uh, older than I am. I think it's 63 years old. Six, 63 years they've been married. It's harder. I'm getting older, but I, I believe I'm nearly old. Nearly. Y'all will pray for it. I believe we could do a little more than just walk to the mailbox. And then my poor old husband, since he's nearly 90, he can't hardly do that. Amen. But it is hard. It's hard when you have to, you know, just let the yard. Don't look as good as you want it to. You know, you can't get leaves up. Pray that the wind will blow that way and blow them into, into them old woods back there that right. nobody cares about. Well, sometimes it helps us some. Yeah. But we got a dear son. He's got a place in uh, Hilton Head. I wish they'd be down there when y'all were there. I'd like to see you go get a hold of that boy. <laughs> he, he is running, running, running. But he's getting quieter about it when we try. You can't make them. You can't make them. But I got God's promise. He's going to save them. He's going to save them. He's going to bring them in. You know what? I hate to leave this place. It is. That anointing is it. Y'all can be seated. Y'all can be seated. Listen to me. Sister Head, 
I know you want to sit down, but you ain't going to get to today. Brother Claude, can you stand up one more time? Can you walk right up here? Seventy. When he got about seventy, he got the feeling old. But I looked down in them eyes. I said I can still look down in them eyes. See that tall, black, curly-headed man I married. But this is the biggest part: twenty-eight inch of waist. <laughs> that's hard for y'all to see, but that's the heart of love. Love will keep them young. That's what you see when you look in my eyes. Me. <laughs> A reflection of his young wife. You, listen to me. In a world that we live where marriage and vows and love is so cheap on the internet and life just so fickle and no one cares. I thank God for couples like Sister, Sister Barbara and Brother Claude Head who not only carry the gospel but carry their vows seriously and their love for each other. And for 63 years, hey, that's worth applauding right there in my opinion. Now, that old. I know you're not. This is what I want to do for them. I've done this for a lot of people. Y'all probably know where I'm going. I've already got an honorarium to give her for her coming and speaking for my past appreciation. Well, let me tell you something. Paul is very serious about giving to people who are worthy to be given to. He told one, some, he said, you'd have plucked your eyes out and gave them to me if I'd have asked you for them because you love me that much. I really believe souls owe their life to this couple and their ministry throughout the years. In the mountains of North Carolina, up there in Scaly Mountain. Hallelujah to God. Jesus lives up there in heaven. Oh, heaven. <laughs> heaven. This is what I want us to do for them. I want us to bring a love gift, a seed, so that we can ask God to put it in the ground of the heads. So that, hey, the Bible said in your old age, you shall bear fruit. They still growing. They still preaching. They still winning people to Jesus. And you know what? I want to be a part of anybody doing what Jesus said do. I want you. Can you bring? I, I'm telling you, you've, done, you've heard me. I don't do this often. But I want you to bring a love gift to them. And I want you to lay it right down here where it belongs, right at their feet. Can you do that? Can, can y'all do that for me? Get it ready. Get it ready. <laughs> Praise God. Lay it right here. Shouldn't have had it. We're going to pick it up for him. We're going to pick it up. Let me get a couple of ushers right here to pick this up.
Let's get a couple of ushers. Where are the, where are the bags at? Ain't we got them right here close by? They in the office. I need one of them bags for my own personal use. That way I can, I can do whatever I need to do when I need to do it. Now, you know, li listen to me. I want you to listen to me. Now, there may be some visitors in here this morning, and you may just been coming for the last few Sundays. But you got to understand something about Brother Napier, and I appreciate all you do for me. But I am a different preacher. I am a different man. I conduct the business of God differently than other churches and other preachers. I will not apologize for obeying God or doing things as strange to some people. I will not apologize for that because God takes the foolish things to confound the wise. And until our breath leaves my body, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. Is that all right, Sister Head? I'm going to obey God, Brother Claude. Because if I ain't what I ain't, then if I, then I is what I ain't. Take that back there to that office. Give them another hand. I love you. God, I love you so much. God's best. Stand on your feet.